a young man, they called it marijuana, and now they call it the chronic. It's making a comeback, man. What's up with that? The bomb. Yeah. It's like, you know, it keeps people mind at ease. You know, it's not, you know, regular weed is harsh. Chronic is not harsh. Chronic mm -hmm. is smooth, got nice flavor. It's like cigarettes, you know what I'm saying? So I think it keeps people away from the, the dangers and the, the, the um, permanent scars of cocaine. You know, cocaine, you're addicted and you're out of it. We, you can pick it up and put it down when you want to. Yeah. So I think that's what's really the draw for it. Plus, it's, it's ageless. You know, you can go to your mom and your mom used to smoke weed, or your daddy, your granddaddy, your uncle, somebody in your family. Yeah. So I think that's that's cool like that. You write out on your album, say, I ain't no role model. <laughs> that's <laughs> real. That's real. Because a role model got to play a role, and a real model got to be real. And if I'm a real model, all I got to do every day is wake up and be myself, you know? And I think my thing is I really don't care. I really don't give a F. So mm -hmm. that's, how I, that's how I portray myself. And if people look up to that, then it's cool. I never let them down. Mm -hmm. But if they look up to me thinking, well, he's going to get a job, he's going to have his degree, they're going to get let down, and I'm the wrong model. Give him a little rhyme, just a little bit. Let him know what's to come. I care. I keep my mind on my money, money on my mind, finger on the trigger, hand on my nine, smoking blunts and skunk and putting holes in punks and on the underground funk pumping out of my trunk. Mm, that's enough. Feel that's me? enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. I right, see you're gonna rap when we come back. <clears throat> <laughs> My next guest is not only climbing up the pop and R&B charts with his current hit album, but he's also taking the box office by storm with his role as Lucky opposite Janet Jackson in a new movie called Poetic Justice. You all probably remember him from Juice, but let me show you a clip of his latest work. What's your name? Lucky. Lucky. Hey. Come here, Lucky. I want to whisper something to you. Let's cut the bullshit, okay? And what do you really, really want from me? You want to smell my punani? Hmm? Yeah. Please welcome Tupac Shakur. <laughs> See, I get a feeling there are two Tupacs. Uh, See, I mean, you're this kind, sensitive, friendly guy. Unani smelling God. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. You're involved in so much controversy, but we'll get to all of it. How's Janet as an actress? How does she do? She's great. I think she's going to surprise a lot of people by just being natural and her being real, like, home girlish. You know, everybody's expecting her to be rich and act rich, but she handles that. She does that. Yeah, you know you got the role every man in America wants. Right. <laughs> the Bunani smelling role. Everywhere I go, you smell the Bunani up. That is you. You and Janet Jackson. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> Poonani. <laughs> My mother gotta go see that movie, man. Yeah, um, I know you ain't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to kiss her? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Is she a good kisser? Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. I was like, cut, do it again. <laughs> One more time, John, please. Y'all don't even gotta pay me. Do it again. <laughs> Was her boyfriend on the set? Oh, right there. <laughs> he was right there. Did that intimidate you? Not intimidate me, but it made me, like, really want to kiss her. You know what I'm saying? Because... <laughs> you know, I was like, man... I only got one shot. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Man, you know, he's going to try to give her a kiss as soon as it's cut anyway. So let me do mine so I know he can't do his. I was <laughs> kissing her like I wanted something from her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was, at home, I was at home practicing with 30 wires of bubble gun. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> she gonna get it. <laughs> I, I, was, I was watching TV this weekend, and there's this whole controversy about the AIDS test. What yeah. happened? Okay. Somebody came to my trailer, the director of the film, John. We John need Singleton. you to take an AIDS test, because you're going to kiss Janet, 
Q-tip just kissed her. She caught a cold or something. You know what I'm saying? That's what they said. And I was like, well, am I going to really, you know, do it to her? They said, no. I said, well, ain't no need for me to take a test. He laughed. The producer came in. Mm -hmm. You know, the white guy, are you going to do it? Uh, no. You know what I'm saying? He left. Somebody else came in. So, <laughs> pop, everybody started doing roundabout. My manager, my agent. So far, I was like, no, I'm not taking the test. If I'm going to get to really lay with her, we could take four tests. If she really want to be show, <laughs> so. But other than that, it's disrespectful to me. It, 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 you know what I'm saying? It just made me look at her like, what? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, plus I heard she said I was lying. Her people said I was lying about the test. I don't lie. I'm real, too real. So she need to check that. Check her people and check who said it. Yeah. Um, I was in the monologue uh, last week talking about um, this article that was in the paper where the guy killed an officer and then said it was because of your lyrics. I guess the, the actual tape was in the car or something. I got it bad, man. Yeah, it's so much <laughs> stuff, man. Got it bad. People just go, who do we get? Uh, who got the craziest name? <laughs> <laughs> Tupac. <laughs> got him. <laughs> when you read that, what did you say? I said, woo. I mean, I got beat up by the police before. So to me, I felt like, woo. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I didn't do it. So I felt like, you know, whatever he got to do to stay out to the death penalty or whatever, let him do it. You know, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, you know? but you know what the judge say? Yeah. <laughs> Mama said, lock you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guilty. <laughs> now, wrap that. Yeah, yeah. Guilty. Yeah. But the whole bad part is they was bothering me. And I had the vice president on TV talking about taking my record off the shelves. Police, you know, every time they see me, they think I'm a cop killer. I never kill what I do. Just because somebody just put my name in it. So there's really no way, you know, to get around it except to keep struggling. You know, there's people that struggle harder than me and go through things harder than me. So it's a small thing. You had a suit against a police department for brutality, right? Oakland Police Department. They beat me up pretty bad for nothing. For jaywalking. But it's cool. For jaywalking? Yeah, I got revenge on their ass now. What, what was the revenge? You know, I went, I, they beat me up in that city, took me to jail. I was back within two months doing a major motion picture with Janet Jackson. And they had to protect me. We was hiring them. And I was the star. So, you know, and I was on the set. Police telling me, where you going? I'm telling them, I'm not coming out my trailer till this cop is off the lot. I'm not coming out my trailer doing their scene till he leave. And they got to make the cop go. Well, the movie can't go on. So I got revenge. Then I left, skied up, and I'm just talking about the police. You know? <laughs> Um, when, when we were talking at the top of the show, first of all, you did a little rap, and uh, it contained the word nine. Yeah. Now, uh, on the street, that's nine millimeters. Right. Uh, you gonna get some letters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering, are you concerned that possibly it'll affect box office or record sales because you're too close to the edge, you're too hard? It's like this. The masses, the hungry people, they outweigh the rich. So as long as I appeal to the hungry and the poverty-stricken people, it's all good. I'm going to have a job for life. It's these rich people who worried about the, the, the fooling the poor people. Yeah. Everybody knows crime out there. Everybody know what type of situation we in in the streets. All I'm doing is showing you and yeah. telling you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why get mad at the brother that bring you the news? Get mad at the person that's making it happen. Feel me? It's like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, you know, th there's, a, there's a weird game that goes on because now as a result of your art you're becoming one of the rich yes not rich but they giving me checks more often <laughs> <laughs> but they got this cool way to keep to keep a brother broke you know what i'm saying like like you say i got like seven lawsuits against me for nothing but i still got to pay the lawyers still got to pay everybody to go to court still got to pay for a bodyguard because now they say i gotta have one you know i still got to pay yeah. you know it's just more bills they give me more checks but they also give me more bills yeah. People stealing my car, you know, all that type of stealing my radio. I just got my little radio stuff. I had to get another one, but it's cool. I'm going to find who got my radio, trust me. <laughs> I got a low jack on it. I'm going to find it. <laughs> nah. Matter of fact, let me see where you're staring. Hey, 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 it's not me, man. It's not me. <laughs> we also were talking about this movement in the music business back to marijuana. Uh, everybody from Dr. Dre, whose album is called The Chronic, mm -hmm. to Black Crows. Um, let me play devil's advocate. Is this irresponsible considering we have kids who enjoy the music? Mm -hmm. it, well, it's like this. It's like 
parents have to do their job. The rappers. Mm-hmm. We can only we can only do things rappers like Charles Barkley said, you know, he play ball, y'all mm-hmm. be parents. And yeah. it's like that. It's like we rapping about how we feel. We really do smoke weed. You know? Yeah. We really do see that as a way for us to calm this, this these riots that we hear in our head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like so our job is to talk to the youth. When we talking to the youth, we tell them, man, we got it bad. But we sitting here smoking this weed trying to get through it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's telling them, stop killing each other, man. Let's just smoke a blunt. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Let, let's smoke yeah. a blunt. Yeah. If you stress, let's smoke a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Anti-violence, pro-blunt. Is that it? Pro-blunt. Yeah. <laughs> now, what will you tell your first son? Um, like my mama told me, if you want to get high, get high with me. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And my mama, a panther. And I sat and got high with my mama. I'm sorry, a, 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 black panther, panther. a black panther. I sat and got high with my mama and could go out in the streets and tell my friends, that ain't weed. <laughs> Y'all smoking some angel dust or something, that ain't weed. Because my mama told me what weed was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I could help my friends so they wouldn't be messing with mysterious drugs. Because it's drugs out there and people do them. Coffee is a drug. You know what I'm saying? It's just that young people don't drink coffee. I'm we glad smoke. Coke is out. Coke is out, right? And that's the whole crew. Cool, that's what we should be cheering. We're not talking about doing no Coke. You know, we not only not talking about doing coke, but if anybody do coke, they ostracizing this business. Can marijuana lead to something harder? No. Okay. You're gonna rap for us? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Tupac. Shakur. Coming right up. Performing his hit single, I get around from his CD, strictly for my N I G G A Z. This is Tupac. One night town break out of declare. Hey, are you down? 